four of the G1 Climax 34 has arrived. It is done. It is in the bag. That means it is my turn to come in to recap and review everything for you, gentle audience here of the Mr. Warren Hayes Show podcast. Hello. How are you? I, of course, am Mr. Warren Hayes. And it is time to break everything down, uh, strip it down to its barest bones. Um, not that there's much to strip off <laughs> on, day, on day four. Look, nothing. You, you want my overall feeling? Let's start with that. Not a not a terrible show. Not a bad show by 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 any stretch of the imagination. A very good match on on the show. But aside but aside from that, just like things happening, solid little matches, but nothing to blow you away. Kind of like uh, kind of like uh, you know stuff just coming together. Uh, little maybe twists and turns in some stories. We'll get to that. Of course, stories pertaining to the tournament. Um, but uh, but that's where that's where we're at. <laughs> this is this is what this this night of B block action gave us. So uh, uh, I hope uh, I hope you're excited to hear the rest. I I don't expect this is going to go too long. But every time I say something isn't going to go too long, it goes long. So uh, who knows? But uh, on it, I because I honestly don't have much. To talk about I don't have much to share but we'll I'll make it worth your while I'll do my very best to make it worth your while so that uh, this night of uh, B block action doesn't feel like something completely insignificant because it's not not insignificant but it's a night you can easily you could easily skip over you know what I mean um that being said you know if it's your first time here on the channel whether it's on youtube.com slash mr warren hayes or on your favorite podcast application can consider subscribing joining that way you won't miss a single day of g1 climax uh goodies that i have uh, prepared like i I'm here i don't really prepare them i wait till the shows happen and then i pop on and talk about them so that's not really preparation um let's be let's be honest uh, but uh, you know, if you don't want to miss a single thing, if you want to join in on my uh, my 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 daily recaps, my analysis of the G1 this year, uh, which I've been which I've been doing for the past couple of nights, uh, well, why don't uh, why don't you subscribe and join and so on and so forth? And if you're watching this on YouTube, a like on the video as well would be tremendous. Growing podcasts need this type of help, so I'd appreciate it a great deal. That being said, let's get right to it. We were at the Sun Mess Kagawa in uh, Takamatsu, Kagawa, Japan. Um, I do not have the attendance. I I literally just refreshed. Literally just refreshed uh, as I popped in here. As I was saying, I do not have the attendance numbers. I just refreshed the file and boom, there it is. The internet, man, it's magic. <laughs> it's magic, and make you know can can make it so that you look like a fool, <laughs> you know, and you sort of roll with it. Uh, what do we got as far as attendance goes? Uh, One thousand two hundred and nineteen uh, is registered for the attendance for the show. It's a uh, it's a difficult comparison to to check out. I you know looking it up here, uh, I believe that this is the first time New Japan runs this venue. I feel I feel like not, but <laughs> you know going through this uh, going through this database. Um, yeah, going through these notes here, it would seem that this would be. All right, I think there's something. I think there might be a. I think there might be a wee glitch. Because I feel I've seen this venue. Uh, I I feel I've seen this venue before, but look, doing my little my little uh, uh, investigation here. Uh, real quick, it, it it would appear, and yeah, feel free to prove me wrong because I'm not entirely, I'm not super confident uh, in that regard, but uh, uh, feel free to prove me wrong, but I believe this is New Japan's, um, that this is New Japan's first um, 
show in in this venue. You know, someone was telling me recently that there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of venues in Japan right now, or at least classic, you know, pro wrestling venues that are under renovations or you know um, that are under renovations and stuff like that. So, uh, like. Otis City, for instance, is you know a fairly fairly well known and and, and popular venue among um, around, among wrestling promotions, and that one is currently like closed for renovations and stuff like this. So look, you know, it is what it is. Um, if we compare to last year, uh, let's say night for night, night four of uh, the climax thirty three. Uh, which was in uh, Sendai, uh, 1,657 people showed up. So we're in the uh, we're in the same vicinity as far as uh, um, we're, we're in the same vicinity as far as attendance goes. It's not yeah, you know, it's a, it, it's obviously lower, but you know nothing nothing completely out of the ordinary. Um, yeah, well, there you go. So it, it's it's really weird because I really feel like I really feel like uh, New Japan has been here before, and 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 I can't I can't get it out of my head. I just can't get it out of my head. Like I know they use the you know they use the the gym there. <laughs> they use the Takamatsu City Gym. Uh, and and they used it this year for the for a Fantastic Mania uh, event. Um, let's see, last year, yeah. See, the, last year they were in Takamatsu. Maybe this is why it's not connecting with me, because they were in Takamatsu Kagawa last year, or Kagawa Takamatsu, depending on. You know, I, I'm not quite sure, how, wh- you know, which goes first in these circumstances. But they did night eleven of the G one last year uh, in the same city, but in the Takamatsu City Gym, and that drew fifteen hundred fifty nine people. But that was like night eleven. You know, we're we're further down the track there. Um, so you know, interesting. Yeah, the 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 the, the Sun Miss Kagawa. Takamatsu Kagawa. I, 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 your guess is as good as mine at this at this point. I, uh, I'll just drop it. See, I, I told you this wouldn't be too long, but I'm, you know, unconsciously stretching this out. This, this is how my brain operates. Um, let's go with the results. Uh, of course, per usual, we're not gonna focus on the uh, the uh, undercard matches, the tag matches. You can go check those out. If you want, but um, as far as the B block matches go, Hiroki Goto defeated Oleg Bolton. Uh, Ren Narita defeated Jeff Cobb. El Fantasmo defeated Yoda Suji. Dave Finley defeated Hanare. And Yuya Yumera beat Kanesuke Takeshita. I just realized on Cage Match, they still have him as Oleg Bolton, but New Japan refers to him as Bolton Oleg. This is so confusing because I feel it works in both. It works both ways. You could call the guy Oleg Bolton. And to a degree, I feel that's that fits him better. You know, that his first name is Oleg. It kind of works, right? But they refer to him as Bolton Oleg. Well, look, let's start. Uh, let's start with that match uh, uh, where Hiroki Goto defeated him, um, you know, it's kind of what you expected. Big power showing by uh, by Bolton, uh, Oleg, you know, as expected. And, you know, Hiroki Goto is going toe-to-toe with him. But he, once again, I feel like he's giving a lot. We talked about this yesterday when it came to Callum Newman. Um, and, and, the, and, you know, when it comes to Zack Sabre Jr. as well, I feel like Goto did give a lot here. Uh, he's going toe to toe with um, with uh, Oleg, so that's good. Uh, you know, who, he also does the 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 the, the gut wrench swings as well, and 
Goto hits Inuri Garoshi. Uh, Oleg hits a Vader bomb. Big Fireman's carry slam by Oleg as well. Uh, we get into some near falls and the GTR for the win. I gave this a, an even three stars. I thought, you know, really well worked, strong stuff. Just missed pizzazz. We also got to say, we're going to bring this up here. The <laughs> the the Sun Meskagawa audience, uh, not the most uh, not the most dynamic uh, not the not the most dynamic group on planet Earth. <laughs> not the most uh, not the most exciting. They were kind of uh, on their hands for most of this uh, for most of this show. Um, just we're we're, we're just going to put that out there. Uh, next, we had uh, uh, Red Narita defeating Jeff Cobb. Uh, Narita goes after Cobb before the bell. And uh, they fight right into the audience. Then Cobb gets in control because of this. It's, you know, he's a big dude. Uh, Narita avoids the standing moonsault, goes right uh, to Cobb's knees. And he works, uh, he works the knee for the majority of the match. We go back into the crowd, but Narita... He, He's just working the knee throughout. Um, Cobb fights back with some power moves. The standing moonsault lands. But uh, a knee bar uh, by Narita keeps the pressure on the huge uh, Cobb. Who then lands a terrific F5 as well. Uh, we get a ref bump. I mean, we were doing so well. I, I was I, you know, I was enjoying this match. Uh, and uh, Jeff Cobb does the thing where he's got the push-up bar in his hands. And he's not sure he wants to use it, you know. But then, like, just when he decides that he's going to use it, the ref comes to, takes it away from him, which allows Ren Narita to hit the low blow and uh, get the uh, X Factor uh, for the win. So Narita is up on the board. for. Well, I forgot to mention, Hiroki Goto got his first two points of the tournament, so he's up on the board. And Narita is up there with uh, four now. He's got two wins uh, to his name, so he's got four points now. Ah, uh, it's fine, fine, the good little match, and you know, I'll tell you what I appreciate though about Ren Narita here. Uh, it's how how little the interference has been overwhelming in his matches. Right, he, he does you know some cheat to win stuff. He is a heel and so on and so forth. Okay, I get it, but you know the the, the parade of nonsense that accompanies most House of, House of Torture matches. Um, isn't there, and I can appreciate it. Well, it's another thing for 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 evil, but um, but you know, particularly in the last match. But um, when it comes to uh, when it comes to Narita, look, if this is if this is the worst that is being shoveled out, that's not so bad. Uh, I gave this three and a quarter star, and like we said, Narita has four points. Jeff Cobb still at two. Uh, El Fantasmo defeated Yoda Suji. So I thought these guys had a strong beginning, going in with some strikes, and I thought it was pretty good. ELP plays the hits, you know, does the body press into the lion salt, does a UFO. Uh, so we're in familiar territory here. He dives, uh, he dives, and uh, to to Suji, of course, who then you know, just flies over the barricade into the audience. And then ELP does the springboard dive all the way outside onto the barricades, which is always a great spot. Um, all throughout uh, this, uh, Yoda Suji has been working a knee, uh, does a standing clover leaf. They do a strike exchange, stomp by Yoda Suji, some back and forth, and, uh, and another stomp by Suji, who does a falcon arrow. Uh, Runs towards uh, ELP and runs right into a sudden death. The super kick eats the CR2, but ELP's leg gives out, so he can't immediately pin Suji. Uh, uh, can't cover him, not even just can't pin him, can't cover him in time, so uh, Suji kicks out. Um, Thunder Kiss uh, 86 follows, but Suji gets his knees up. He rolls up ELP, and they're in a bit of a small package type of situation. Where uh, where ELP balances out uh, from the pinning predicament, still holding on to the to the package, and sort of you know shifts his weight over so that Suji's shoulders are pinned to the mat, and he gets the win. I think the angle from 
I, the angle that we were seeing it from was a little weird. Uh, but I think it was very clear that Suji's shoulders were on um, were were flat on the mat. So, um, so that's so that so that's the match. I gave this three point five. I thought this was very good. See, nice little progression in the card. You know, you go to you get you you get you know three and a, you know three three and a quarter three point five. That's pretty good. Um, I, I enjoyed this. I thought this was pretty good. Um, uh, well, more than pretty good. I thought this was a good match. If just like a match that's happening, like you know, there's no oomph, there's no magic to it. There's nothing where you're like, oh shit, you know, kind of thing. It just kind of happened, um, and uh, and I was excited to. Um, I'm excited that. You know, let me rephrase that. I'm hoping now <laughs> that moving forward. The sad man gimmick that ELP has will be left, le you know, tossed aside, left alone, and no one, you know, that that now he now that he has a win, he'll feel energized and and revived, and we don't have because man, I forgot to mention this when he did commentary on night three, was it night three? I think so, uh, and he was still doing the sad man gimmick. That was kind of a bummer. That was, you know, and I understand, like, you know, you do the kayfabe thing. Don't get me wrong. I understand it. I just think it's a bummer. Just think it, it, it brings, it, it brings stuff down. That's just me, of course. I'm sure uh, some of you uh, enjoyed it tremendously. But uh, uh, look, I had said that I hope that the ELP sad man thing would last, you know, three matches. I'd give them four tops. And now this is the this this was his third match, and now he's he's got the win. So hopefully we can move on from this and uh, maybe get get some, uh, some some proper wins in here. Maybe maybe this will light a fire. I don't know. I wouldn't worry about Yoda Suji. I think uh, he's got a lot of good things on his way. So ELP scores his first two points of the tournament. Suji still at two. Dave Finley uh, defeated Hanare. Strong physical match. You know, Finley is in control here, and he's in control for for most of this match here. Uh, does the Irish curse backbreaker? Uh, you know, Hanare's doing the you know he's getting the hope spots, but Finley has a uh, has an answer for everything. He, he, he always has he always seems to just have the upper hand they trade some strikes uh a dominator by finley uh who also blocks a flying knee and reverses it into a power bomb which was great a rampage by hanare but uh you know finley lifts him into the overkill and gets the win um dominant showing by dave finley here who um uh, uh who i feel was in the driver's seat. This was a Dave Finley match and, uh, you know, made sure that he was able to, to, to quell all of the explosiveness, the fierceness that Hanare has. He did a great job doing specifically that. I thought it was convincing. Maybe not, the, you know, I, I give this match three and a quarter stars, which I, and I feel right now, this is Dave Finley's least interesting match of the tournament so far. Still fine. Not a. I am not here saying that this was a bad match, but it is the the it is the least interesting that he's had so far. He I I feel the two previous nights that he's had were tremendous showings. Here, uh, <laughs> maybe not as. I I don't think it was as. Uh, I don't think the. I don't think it was a sharp. I don't think it was as 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 good. I don't think his uh, his strength was really put on display. So I mean, this was fine, but I feel we could have got a little more life out of this one. Weird, right? That that was my feeling coming into this one. So uh, Finley scores his first two points, and um, I don't think he's gonna lose another match. I think I, I think he's gonna stay in this conversation. From this point on, seeing how they, you know, 
uh, seeing how he's been, how he was booked the first two nights, you know, and looking at what's happening here. You know, they they love David Finley. They perceive Finley as a top guy. So don't you worry. He's not out of the conversation and he's gonna stay right there till till the till the very end. So um yeah, I mean it, there you go. That was a match that happened. Um and a final match. Dave Finley scores his first two points and Nari still at four. And then the main event, Yuya Yumera defeated. Kaneske Takeshita in a tremendous main event. This was a blast. Um, you know, just two guys doing moves, doing great power moves, and continuing to make this, uh, to make this, uh, to, to help Yuya develop this crowd connection. And I, I can't help by, but feel like if he were in a group that didn't include Sonata. You know, I mean, look, that's unfair because there's Tai Chi in there who knows how to develop a crowd connection and can absolutely, like, you know, give him tips, pointers, coach him, whatever. I, I feel like this guy could flourish even more. And it's wild to me that he's getting the push he's getting. And this is his debut G1 where generally, you know, Booking is a lot more conservative when it comes to people starting their coming in with their first G1s where it's like, well, you're going to lose some matches. You know, you're not going to you're, you're going to lose most of your matches, but, you know, next year you're going to win a little more so on and so forth. Now, not only is he uh, is he having a great tournament so far as far as in ring quality, uh, he's beating some of the top guys in the block. But look, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, I, like I said, moves, big moves, power. It's kind of what you expected here. Uh, Yumera does a, a plancha into a, uh, uh, does a plancha, right? But he lands on the floor right into a, a straight right by Takeshita, uh, who follows it up with a great vertical brain buster, like a tremendous brain buster right on the floor. Um, he then uh, follows up with a diving senton and a huge running knee. Um, Yumera does a flying forearm and a uh, huge superplex by Takeshita. And those are always just so impressive. Topi Hilo follows. Uh, Yumera suckers uh, Takeshita into hitting the post. And that weakens the arm. He had already had some issues with his arm early in the match. But this like um, strengthened them. Um, so, um, so he goes after it a little bit, cross body into a cross arm breaker by, uh, by Yumera, poison Rana by Takeshita. And then you have this fun little sequence here where Yumera hits a German, Kaneske hit, hits a Lariat, followed by a drop kick by Yumera and both guys are down. Just tremendous stuff. Just in sequence. Boom, boom, boom. Blue Thunderbomb by Takeshita, Dragon Suplex by Yumera, Rana roll up by Yumera which is how you know commentary underscored it which is how he he uh he defeated Dave Finley um where he that's how he defeated Dave Finley a couple of nights ago big german suplex by Takeshita um and um we, we then we get into a backslide situation with uh with two guys and Yumera holds on to the backslide and lock and 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 performs the deadbolt suplex and commentary was putting over how are you going to be able to lift a guy the size of Kaneske Takeshita etc etc and when he did it was just tremendous and it was kind of out of nowhere I don't think anyone really saw it coming but it was tremendous and I think what was interesting yeah you know Yumera did work the arm a little bit but he didn't specifically focus on on a body part um I thought he he got a lot of offense here he um, he, he and, and, and Takeshita worked really well and they were just dropping each other and, and la throwing bombs and I thought it was tremendous. I thought, that, like, this is the kind of, this is one of the kinds of matches I really, really, really like. I don't want to say this is the kind of match. It's one of them. There's a, you know, anyway. It's not a review on your tastes, Warren. It's a review on this show. And, um, 
And yeah, look, I, overall, good match. The best match of the night, like, unquestionably. Um, Yumera now is at six points. And Takeshita is at four. And like I said, you know, Yumera right now is riding high. Like, he has been having a tremendous G1 so far. And he just, like I, I was starting to get into earlier, but, we're, you know... Now that, that that we talked now that we talked about the results, we can maybe you know dig a little under the surface here. Um, Yumera has uh, he's probably got the worst or the technically the 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 hardest wins he could get of the tournament are done right. He defeated Dave Finley like whatever. However you feel about Dave Finley. Uh, he is seen as a top guy in the company. He's pushed as a top guy. He's the global champion. Don't don't um, don't get your 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 signals crossed. Uh, he's seen as a top guy. So he was someone which I personally didn't necessarily think Yumera was was going to defeat, but ended up doing that. And he defeated T uh, Takeshita. So who's left in B block that legitimately you could be like, oh, this person poses a real threat to to Yumera. I don't know. Maybe he won't overcome this. Suji, maybe because of their 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 rivalry. You know, they've got you know they they've got a, a, a personal side story going there. So maybe you know. Cobb, Jeff Cobb, maybe again, big maybe. Like if anything, you get Yumera into this situation to pin the champion, so that he can claim a a, a world TV title shot when all this is done. Hinare again, maybe Phantasmo, maybe Narita, and probably not Bolton, no. Like, there's nothing here that screams to me, um, oh, yeah, like, the, you know, if he wins here, it's an upset. Oh, this is an uphill battle. Like, I feel like the worst of his tournament is out of the way. That being said, you know, there's a lot of volatility because, uh, you know, we don't know because of all the young guys in the tournament, right, who are all jockeying to... To, 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 to find a spot here to, to, to keep their spots in the company and the future G1s and so on and so forth. It goes beyond just winning this year. So maybe, just maybe, uh, you know, the, the, look, maybe this is, he'll, he'll have one loss. Maybe he, this is, maybe this is Yuya's year and none of us saw it coming. But now that he's in it, you're like, holy shit, this really, this rules. He's been tremendous so far. He's been the most consistent wrestler of the tournament. Absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt so far. Um, but like I said, you know, because of everything being so volatile that you don't have, let's say, you know, oh, a Tanahashi, an Okada, an Osprey, where these are like, you know, centerpieces, where these are people where you're like, oh, or an Omega, or an Ibushi, you know these people that were you that were in previous iterations where if you were a younger guy you were like ah he's, you know he's got all these people lined up still his tournament his tournament is you know he's going to have a rough go still um i don't know the, i i don't feel like like it's so clear cut again it just could be very volatile still you know he could trade losses with or, you know, he could lose, I, I should say, to Hinare and Phantasmo, you know, like. But right now, like, if you look at this objectively, it really seems that the, the worst of his tournament is out of the way. So as far as recommendations go, well, I, I think it's pretty clear. Uh, watch watch Takeshita and Yumera. I think Yumera has been must watch so far. Uh I, I don't think there has been a night that I haven't recommended uh, Yuya, uh, right? Right. 
So, uh, so go enjoy that. But otherwise, like I would, you know, if you were even to listen to my review here and say, I think I'll just skip it. I completely understand as well. You know, it's, there was nothing here that, that, that blew my mind. There's nothing here. It wasn't a top to bottom compelling show. We've had better shows already in this tournament. Are we already getting into the dog days of the tournament? Hopefully not. I sure hope not. It's a little early for that. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, that one match. Otherwise, you can really skip the rest. Um, so as far as standings go, uh, as far as standings go for for the for the tournament, or at least for Block B so far, look, Yu Yu Mera is the only guy at the top with six points. Tied for second are Kaneske Takeshita, Hinare, Ren Narita, uh, uh, all three of those guys have four points, and then uh, everyone else has two points, meaning Yoda Suji, Oleg Bolton, Jeff Cobb, Hiroki Goto, El Fantasmo, Dave Finley. Um, if you listen to my preview that I did with Chris, Chris Samza, we both agreed that B Block had the most potential to be the block where there would be a log jam at the top. And I think, I feel like this is where we're heading, where you're going to have multiple guys being in this position, uh, being in a position where um, they could still be in the conversation and qualify till the very last minute when we start talking about wackadoo scenarios. Uh, but we are absolutely not there yet. It is way too soon in the tournament. Um, but uh, but yeah, right now there's one guy who was at the top, and that is Yuya Yumera. Who is having a great tournament so far? I think he's been uh, he's been very good. Um, so next time we are going to be doing this again on July twenty seventh, this Saturday. So another another day off. Uh, tomorrow Friday, then we're back on Saturday with a block action where we are going to have Shingo Takagi versus Callum Newman, Sonata versus Gabe Kidd. Shota Umino versus Great Okan. Zack Sabre Jr. versus Jake Lee. If Zack Sabre Jr. Gets, uh, uh, gets a good match out of Jake Lee, then you know that he's, he's the guy to belt up and be, make champion, right? He's the guy. And Tetsuya Naito versus Evil. Um, might not be, on paper, the most compelling... Night of G1 action, that being night five, but we'll be here. We will be back to review and recap everything on uh, on Saturday and see how uh, see how exciting all of this turns out to be. Um, in the meantime, I want to thank everyone for watching, for listening. One more pitch for a like, a review on Apple Podcasts or a rating on uh, Spotify would be tremendous. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. And I'll see you next time.